Hello and welcome back to my channel and a happy new year. I'm so excited to bring you a new series on my channel which is interviewing professionals from the industry. I've asked these industry professionals a range of questions so you can find out a bit more about what people do across divisions, across departments and across publishing houses. To start off the series we have a resourcing advisor from Penguin Random House that talks about a recent application that had over 1300 applicants apply for the role. In addition to this, my guest to the channel talks about how a new tree is planted for every new employee at Penguin Random House. So I hope you enjoy the video and hopefully you learn something. And now I hand it over to Katrina Kaplan. Hi, I'm Kat Kaplan and I'm a resourcing advisor at Penguin Random House UK. So I'm a resourcing advisor with Penguin Random House um, and that is basically an in-house recruiter. I've got three specific areas of the business that I recruit for. So our children's team and I recruit for roles, um, you know, from editorial assistant to marketer to book cover designer. Uh, then I also recruit for our finance team who are based um, across both of our sites in London and Essex. And I recruit for our distribution team. So things like warehouse operatives, customer service, um, Amazon data analytics, and they are just based in Essex. Uh, day to day, the role varies hugely. Over the pandemic, my role has sort of evolved into something that I probably never expected it to. Um, recruitment is a really sort of people focused role and it's been a challenge to do that virtually, but somehow we've managed and actually we've been working um, from home since March. So it feels like the role has kind of evolved into something more than it was when we were first last in the office. Um, what do I do on a day to day basis? Uh, what don't I do, I guess, would be easier to answer. Um, so I do everything from kind of writing the adverts that you see on our website to engaging with candidates who maybe haven't seen those adverts and doing more of a headhunt on platforms like LinkedIn. Um, I then work with our hiring teams to understand what it is that they really want from the role, what type of person they think would do really well, what type of background they might come from. Um, do they work in another industry outside of publishing or maybe even outside of the creative industry um, with really interesting skills that we would want to see in the teams that we're building. I also attend and run a lot of our inclusive hiring initiatives. So things like the scheme, which we run every year, although sadly not in 2020. Um, I take part in working publishing weeks. So Penguin runs something called Job Hack during that week where myself and one of my other team members in resourcing uh, do a live presentation about how to get into publishing, um, how to write an amazing CV and cover letter, interview advice, all that sort of stuff. So they're the kind of things that I really look forward to doing in my role and the things that I guess I enjoy the most. But outside of that, when I'm hiring someone, for example, a book cover designer, when I see that finished product on the shelves or, you know, on Amazon or in Waterstones and I see a book cover designed by someone that I've hired into the business, that's like one of the most fulfilling things about my job, because even though I haven't had a direct impact on that book, I know in some part the person that went through our recruitment process and eventually ended up designing that cover so that's something that I kind of really enjoy seeing the fruits of my labour in that respect. So if I could bring back any fashion trend I would bring back a shop actually from my childhood that sold the fashion that sustained me throughout the 90s and the 2000s. That shop was called Tammy or Tammy Girl, I think it was just Tammy. Um, anyway, you walk into this shop and every single vest has like an angel and a devil on it and it would be like 90% angel, 10% devil. Um, they also had a lot of like things with fishnet, so fishnet arms on like shirts, um, a lot of pink, a lot of blue, um, just quite like sickly sweet clothing that I feel like is kind of having a bit of a resurgence from people who had no idea what Tammy Girl was. So yeah, I would bring back the whole shop of Tammy, but I would want to make sure that the clothing in there was like a capsule collection of only things that they sold in the 90s and the 2000s. I think I have to say the team that I work with, um, it's a really great team. I know everyone says that about their teams, but the HR team at Penguin is like one that I've never known before. We're all really, really supportive of each other. We all kind of go out of our way to make sure that everyone is doing okay. And I think particularly at a time like this, 
that's really important and you know occasionally someone will reach out that I'm not expecting to and just ask me how are you how's your day going you know what have you been up to outside of work and that kind of communication is really important in a team it builds those relationships but it also just makes you feel that you're still part of one even though we're not physically together in the office anymore so for me the team that I work within is definitely one of my favorite things about the job that I have um, and then I guess outside of that it's really being able to have an impact on the business and how the business is changing I think this year rightly so there's been a huge emphasis on recruiting um, diversely and rec recruiting inclusively and it's something that you know as a recruiter is always on your agenda but it's really been brought brought to the, the forefront um, this year and I'm really proud of the way that Penguin is running that and the initiatives that we have in place and the projects that we're working on to really support our managers in, in being able to do that effectively. So I think that's definitely my two favourite parts of the job. Definitely having to make the phone calls um, to people to let them know that they haven't been successful in an application. Um, maybe they've gone through you know, a lot of interview stages with us. They've really put in a lot of work and done presentations and all that sort of stuff. And ultimately, at the end of the day, there's another candidate who's kind of picked them to the post. And, you know, it means that I'm then having to have a phone call with them to say, look, I'm really sorry, but we're not going to be making you an offer. So that is really challenging. Um, but, you know, as a recruiter, you're input into someone else's career can be the difference between them getting their dream job and not getting their dream job so there's quite a lot of pressure I guess in that sense so it's always going to be a challenge to have those calls but you know on the flip side of that I deal with a lot of candidates who have maybe applied for something with us previously and have been unsuccessful but then apply again for something else down the line whether that be a similar position in a different team or maybe a completely different role altogether and they are successful and then I've kind of joined them on that journey that they've had you know from getting some negative news to start with to now celebrating because they finally secured their role in publishing so it's always going to be challenging to be there at someone's real low point but often it pays off down the line um but, you know, that's recruitment. You're going through the same highs and lows as your candidate because you're just as invested as them in their career journey. So I've been working from home since March, um, which is such a long time. I think at the start of the pandemic, we all thought we were going to do it for a maximum of one month, which is like hysterical now to think that that was ever something that we thought was <laughs> was a possibility. Um, but yeah, it's been since March. The highs of working from home is definitely that I can wear slippers all day if I want to. I don't have to get dressed if I don't want to, although I definitely do. Um, and I feel like I have a little bit more control over my working day. So I, I start work a lot earlier. I normally do an eight till four. Um, I find that I'm more productive in the morning, more productive than I've probably ever been in my career at the moment. Um, the downsides are the number of Zoom quizzes that I have had to do inside and outside of work. I think at the start of the pandemic, it was a real fun like novelty that we were all on Zoom quizzes and everyone would do a round and you'd even have like slideshow presentations and you'd have a glass of wine and it would be like a laugh. Um, now it gives me anxiety to even just think that I've got one coming up. So if my friends are watching this, no more Zoom quizzes. So one interesting thing about my company is that for every new person that joins us, we plant a tree in your honour. Um, don't ask me where the tree is planted or if you can go and visit it. I don't know. I have a vague idea and I really should know, but I don't want to say the wrong thing and for that to become gospel. I think that recruitment is quite a transparent job. So a lot of people probably know what we do day to day. It's not so much of a mystery. Um, but I guess an insight that I can give you about being a recruiter at Penguin is... Um, probably to do with candidate application numbers and how many people we have applying to our roles. Uh, so pre-pandemic for um, something like an entry level editorial assistant role, we would have expected between maybe six and 800 applications for that one role. Um, but sort of now that we're in the pandemic and we're kind of in the middle of lockdown again, our application numbers have been skyrocketing. Um, so recently we had a role that had over 1300 applications. And as a resourcer, it's my job to read through all of the um, application details that the candidates submit. So that's your CV, your cover letter, and any other supporting information. 
um, and then put together my shortlist uh, and send that over to the hiring manager and then wait for them to come back and let me know who they'd like to take through to the interview stages. So it's a really hands on role, probably more so than you would expect um, based on the volumes of applications that we get through. But that's kind of what makes it the role that it is and makes it so interesting because you're in a really privileged position of being able to have seen someone's career path with us from start to finish. So from the moment that they submit their application to the moment that I'm on the phone with them, offering them the job. So it's really rewarding. Just the sheer number of different roles that there are within it. I think it's really easy to just think of publishing as the editorial side of the business. I know certainly for me when I joined, I wasn't expecting there to be such a big um, breadth of you know things going on. So for example, before I started, marketing and publicity were one and the same. I didn't realise that they were you know, completely different functions in the business. I didn't realise that there was a whole set of people that just look at our data analytics. I didn't know that there were people who just focused on um, book cover designs for children's publishing. I kind of thought that there was like one big design team that worked across the whole of PRH, but each individual imprint has their own design team. So I found that really interesting. I also think that there were some roles that I just didn't expect there to be in publishing, like at all. So I never thought about the technology side of the business, for example. I never kind of figured that that was, you know, a big part of the industry. I also didn't really think too much about the finance side of things. You know, how do we work out how much money we make from our books? How do we understand which ones are bestsellers? You know, all of that sort of almost background stuff I didn't understand was part of part of publishing. So I was definitely naive when I started. Um, and there are just so many roles that I think if you look beyond editorial, you can really find your place here because there is something for everyone. That's a really hard question. I think if I think about the books that I've read during lockdown, the standout for me is probably My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. Um, that is not a light holiday beach read. It's really dark, um, but it's gripping and it is completely fascinating. If you've read Lolita by Nabokov, um, it kind of probably makes a little bit more sense, but you could easily read it without having any kind of background knowledge on that book. Um, but yeah, that's that's definitely my number one book for 2020. I think aside from that, um, The New Me, A New Me? The New Me, um, by Hallie Butler, anyway, is a brilliant read. She makes the most mundane everyday tasks interesting, and I actually consume that in a, like, I think about four hours. It was such a good read. Um, and then outside of that, I've been doing a lot of cooking, mostly against my will, but I have been cooking during lockdown more than I ever would. Um, so Mob Kitchen have released a series of cookbooks. I've got the veggie one and uh, like the fast, like the speedy one. Incredible. I can't say that the results of me cooking the dishes have been you know, anything to write home about, but Mob Kitchen are great. And they're also really engaging on Instagram as well. So I hope you found that really useful. Do let me know in the comments if you did find it useful and more of these videos will be coming soon in the new year. So do watch this space. Thank you.